All right, guys, Leonidas Leatherworks. This is a video to uh, reach out to fellow leather workers who are looking at considering a laser for leather work, incorporating that into your leather business. Okay, obviously, uh, first of all is cost. Know that they are expensive and know that you will need to get into a respectable type of laser for a leather business. This is a Glowforge Pro, and it is the bare minimum, I would say, for uh, getting involved with lasers for leather, okay? Uh, it has a higher uh, level of wattage um, than a lot of, if you're looking at those little tabletop things, uh, the little open air lasers that you see advertised on Instagram, Facebook, Amazon, uh, they look neat, they make those things look good on, on their ads, but they are not going to cut it for leather work, okay? Um, so, just know up front, you're gonna have to spend, you know, uh, spend some money. I think this Glowforge Pro, once you add in the filter, once you add in an extended warranty, you're like $7,000. So, there's that, okay? Um, keep that in mind now while I talk about some other pros and cons, okay? A pro, right, is that I can, Design something, and it will be it will, that design will have consistency. It'll have adaptability. I can get in there and I can change the size. I can change the shape of a certain product. Uh, you know, here's a shape of a certain helmet shield. Here's a different shape of a helmet shield. Here's a very similar shape, but a little uh, taller with uh, different sizes of the uh, you know panels for uh, helmet shields. So that adaptability is really nice. The counterpoint to that adaptability, though, is I'm telling you, lasers and getting the design to do exactly what you want it to do in the way you want it to do it, there is a huge learning curve. You need to understand and know vector software uh, type things. Uh, that could be CorelDRAW or uh, the big one, right? Adobe Illustrator. Uh, I use Affinity Designer. Glowforge recommends you use Inkscape. Regardless, there's a huge learning curve for how to get those designs, how to create something in those uh, softwares, and then have it come out the way you want, read by the laser. To go into that just a little bit, let's see if this makes your head spin. And if it does, that's a good maybe red flag for whether you want to buy a, a laser or not. But um, okay, so if I create a certain design in my... Uh, I like I said I use Affinity Designer, okay. Uh, depending on how I want that design to etch, like here the background around these letters is etched down and the letters stand up. Now on a different product I might want the uh, letters to be etched down and the surrounding areas around that those letters to be left up, okay. So just depending on that, I have learned through trial and error then I'm going to have to save those files after I've created them in a vector uh, file. I'm going to have to save those files as SVG or PNG. If I save it as an SVG, I know that it will only etch in a certain manner, but it will cut. Okay. If I want it to etch differently, then I'm going to need to save it as a PNG file, and it will etch the right way that I want it to do for that product, but it won't cut. So I also have to create that SVG file that's the same, uh, get both the SVG and the PNG loaded into the Glowforge software, overlay them, and then prioritize one so that I get the etch the way that I want, and hit ignore on the other type of file that is going to behave differently than I want, except for the part that I do want, which is the cut. So uh, I'll take that component and have it. So, if I just made your head spin, then you might pause a little bit before uh, getting getting a laser. <laughs> it's been a big learning curve. I'm getting it. Um, it still takes me time uh, at times. Also know that the softwares can be tricky in that even, even when I do everything right, for whatever reason, I don't know why. When I export my file, so I can design in a software this product, and I can say I want it to be six inches you know, tall or seven inches tall and X amount wide. 
And I, they, that's very deliberate in that software. The measurements, everything, it's all there. Export it to, to the Glowforge. And uh, ultimately, as that comes up into the software for the processing, it will have, it'll kept, keep the dimensions, but inevitably every single time it changes the size that I've already saved. And um, so what I see is I'll, I'll go to uh, have a product cut. And if I didn't catch it, um, right, every single time, you've got to catch it before you, you hit go. And you've got to see, okay, let's verify the, verify the size. Okay, it changed it to this size. Nope, I want it to be this size. And in the software, right for the burn, you have to change it. The dimensions it will keep, but you just change, like, okay, put in six inches by five inches or whatever it was. Okay. Uh, otherwise, you're going to let the laser go. It's going to burn and cut your product and etch it. It's going to take, it takes, uh, takes a while. The Glowforge Pro, even though it's one of the higher end lasers, is not all that fast. Not, it's not fast when compared to even higher end lasers. Let's put it that way. Um, so, you know, you're gonna spend some time. I'm going to go do other work while that's going to work, but then you would get to your product and go pull it out and go, Oh, it's not the right size. It cut it differently. Okay. So you just have to get in that habit, know the software, know how to use it, and then always re-verify, re-verify sizes before, uh, hitting the final yes, create that product. Um, so it's finicky. It's not as easy as it seemingly should be okay uh one of the pros of course is that i can set it to work uh to create a product for me while i'm doing other leather work that's a huge pro so it's safe because it saves a lot of time that way but also know that uh when you are cutting leather with um lasers right it's essentially burning its way through the leather. So, uh, one, you got to make sure you're vented well. Here at my hose, I'd vented out that window. Um, you, I do have a filter. If I don't want to open the window, it's raining, pouring, snowing, something. Uh, I have a filter. Of course, that filter is expensive, uh, and that will also you know, collect the the fumes and help this leather not stink. In fact, uh, it's worth mentioning that really, if you're going to uh, be cutting and etching on leather that it does need to be veg tan preferably undyed veg tan it seems to be what works best um but uh, some dyed veg tan seems to be okay um but veg tan you're not supposed to cut on oil tanned or chrome tan type products <clears throat> so uh but okay so i'm gonna when it cuts yes i'll i'll take my product out uh and know that so this leather right here, uh, Glowforge will tell you, uh, and a lot of laser, you know, they'll, they'll tell you that they can cut leather, and they can. But like this thickness of leather, this is about a 10 to 12 ounce leather, okay? Uh, I have to have it burn this line, even at full power, I have to have it burn this line three times over to get through a leather that's about this thick. So... Um, Every pass, right, it's trying its best to burn down and through. That's one of the reasons I say the Glowforge is the minimum. Uh, it has a fairly respectable amount of wattage to it. Um, and still, this thick of leather, it has to work to get through it. So uh, having instructed the Glowforge to cut this three times, then maybe, maybe I'll be able to lift this product out of here, and maybe this cutout part will just fall out. Even then, a lot of times I'll have to cut back with a a uh, little exacto knife and kind of finish the release of the part that's supposed to be cut out. So now when I do that, <clears throat> because it's been burning the leather, uh, right? There's going to be flaky, nasty, cucky stuff that uh, um, shows up on your leather that you're going to have to spend extra time sanding away and managing just the, the, the mess that it kind of creates. Also, oh boy. Also, you can see when I'm doing the leather, uh, if I'm going to etch something like, pardon me, if I'm going to etch something like this, I absolutely have to have a protective paper over the top of that leather. And uh, that's also going to just be a, a time consideration because while it saved me time in doing that for me, 
it also is going to cost me time because I'm going to have to peel away that, uh, that paper. But in peeling it away, it's not just going to all come off in one easy piece. Everywhere there's a little, there's an O, there's a D, there's an A, you know, all these things. Um, right, that's going to be, you're going to have to get in there with a knife, not disturb the surface of the leather, but get in there just right and peel that paper away. So it takes time. Now, one of the pros is that with things like helmet shields, with things with lettering, specifically lettering that is difficult to do on a curve, like a helmet shield. I don't know if you've seen it. I certainly have seen it where uh, leather makers do some kind of helmet shields and it looks, the stamping looks pretty good, except the A is just a little bit higher than the rest of the letters and it's a little tilted and that drives me crazy. Okay, um, when I am doing hand stamped helmet shields, boy, I spend a lot of time obsessing before I strike that stamp or press on that stamp. Uh, I obsess about trying to get get the positioning just perfect, and it takes a lot of time. If I create this in the software, easy peasy. I mean, it's, now I say easy. It's not like it takes seconds. It still takes several minutes. Several. It takes a while to sit there and work. Create the create the the lettering. Uh, get the curvature to be the right curvature that you want. But then you can go in with the software and you can tweak uh, very incremental, very small changes to make the letter spacing look look just right the way you want it. So that's a very nice pro. Okay, um, so uh, another, an, another consideration perhaps is that it does enable you to create uh, the, the laser, spe I'm talking specifically about Glowforge Pro, uh, really does, um, and, and lasers that are higher than, than it, really does, uh, you know, it, it does a fantastic job while it seems to struggle with leather, it does a fantastic job with, uh, you know, medium thickness woods. And uh, you can open up your creative world to uh, create some different products like this coaster holder and coasters. Okay, so you can perhaps expand your brand uh, that way by creating these other products. Um, that can also be distracting. And in doing that, there's also, again, there's kind of that learning curve um, in creating those products and trying to decide, you know, how much do you charge? How much do you buy X amount of wood? Uh, trying to anticipate X amount of orders. There's just, you know, kind of the same thing, just, you know, a whole nother aspect to your business that maybe that's what you want, or maybe it's going to take away focus and time from the leather work that you're trying to, um, create. Okay. Um, so that is kind of the meat of it. Um, I put this uh, video together a little impromptu, um, but uh, if uh, if you're interested, um, you know, comment on the video, and I can uh, even uh, you know perhaps put together a scripted uh, video where I really even hit a few more points of considerations. I think that was really that's really the bulk of it right there. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, do some research. Uh, if I had to do it again, I would probably consider going a little higher end on the laser um, in, in, do, in doing it, in pulling the trigger, maybe, maybe. <laughs> or, or maybe it would have been better for me just not pull the trigger on this thing at all. I don't know. Like I say, it, there's been benefits, but there's also been plenty of cons along the way. So something to, uh, something to think about. All right, that's it for now. Thanks.